Earlier this spring, I posted a video showing how well my three Langstroth hives have come through winter. And since then, I've seen a sharp decline in this middle box, which, as you can see, have reduced from a 10-frame box down to a 5-frame nuke. And there's a reason why they're declining. Two years ago, I did a cutout from a two-story front porch column. And when I brought that queen home, I marked her with a white dot indicating that she probably emerged in 21, which would have been the year before the cutout. Now, I don't know for sure if that was the year. I was just making an assumption that when the bees swarmed into that column, it was a queen from the year before. Last year, I did some splits and had some swarms from that original colony and ended up with five colonies from that one original. Well, the queen that's in this box right here is that original queen. So this is her fourth year, which is pretty old for a queen. Typically, the maximum life for a queen is assumed to be about five years. And most beekeepers will re-queen before they get this old. But I'm more laissez-faire and willing to let the colony live out its life. And up until now, this colony has been really strong. Now they're declining, and I need to do something about that. So let's open up the box and see what we can do. They seem to have a pretty good population in here, so they're not fully dying out yet, but since they appear to be in decline, that's not going to improve naturally without some intervention. And the typical answer for a situation like this would be just to requeen the colony, get a new queen, put her in there. But I would like to requeen from good genetics from my apiary. And in particular, I'd like to keep the genetics of this hive if I can. So what I'm gonna do is check in here, see if they have good brood, and I should be more specific, see if they have young brood, meaning eggs and very young larvae. And if they do, then I will just pull the queen and let them make a new queen. We are getting close enough into swarm season and I have seen a number of drones in my other hives so I believe we're in a good state where the bees can make a new queen and she would be able to get mated. Now as far as letting them make their own queen the ideal situation would be if they were to make a swarm queen or a supersedure which means that they purposefully make the queen cell from the start. That could be a slightly better queen than an emergency queen, which is when they make a queen because they have to, using eggs and larvae. But for the most part, emergency queens that I've had my colonies make in the past have turned out pretty good, so I'm not too concerned about that. This frame is mostly empty, has some honey on the edge here, has some honey on the back side. These cells on the back side are all empty, these cells on the front, there is some pollen down through here, but uh, other than that, not a whole lot in that frame. So we've gotten two frames into this five frame nuke and haven't yet seen any brood. I see a little real patchy brood on this next frame. We've got a little cap brood. This side does have some cap brood, but it's real spotty and doesn't look very healthy. We've had some cold nights lately, and I'm guessing possibly that uh, with the number of bees in here, from the top they look like they had a good population. Now that I open it, it's very moderate and I'm guessing that some of that brood may have gotten chilled. Again, this frame is actually mostly resources. They've got some pollen, got some honey, and there's the queen. I think I got her in there. Yep, I got her. Now, the fact that I'm not seeing young brood in here doesn't mean it's not in there. I'm just not pushing all the bees aside to look. But I'm going to take another pass back through. It would be very reassuring to see eggs or young larvae.
And I do plan to go through my other hives tomorrow and make some splits. There's a possibility some of them might be preparing to swarm. And if that's the case, then uh, I can grab a swarm cell. I do see some young larvae in here, so it's possible they could use one of those to make a new queen. Hopefully they have enough population to uh, keep them going. This frame does have a little more cat brood and some larvae. So uh, we'll see how they do with that. I can already hear these bees getting louder. It can take up to three hours for them to notice that they don't have a queen. But in a small box like this, I'm supposing it probably goes much quicker. So that leaves this colony queenless, and now hopefully they'll have what they need to make a new queen. I did see, as I said, some young larvae. I didn't see for sure any eggs in there. It would have been nice to be able to do this a few weeks ago when they had more viable young brood, but at that time, they'd have less likelihood of a queen being mated. I will check back on this hive in about seven days and see if they've made a queen cell. And as I mentioned, it's possible when I go through my other hives, I might potentially find some queen cells in there. And if that's the case, I'll pull one from a good strong hive and add that cell to this hive. If this goes well, just removing that queen is kind of an easy fix to the problem. And if not, the colony really was kind of doomed anyway. I have a slight change of plans for this queen that I just took out of that dying colony. I have this other colony that I got from the cutout that I recently did in an apartment building ceiling. I've given that colony a frame of brood which would at minimum anchor them to the box and would possibly allow them to make a new queen. And I did see that they made a queen cell. But it was so early, I don't think there's any possibility that that new queen, if she did emerge out successfully, would get mated successfully. And I actually just opened this hive up and I did not find any queen. I did not find any evidence of a queen. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and put this queen, this old queen, into this colony. Now I don't believe that this queen is going to suddenly start acting like a young queen when I put her in this colony and make this colony a booming colony. But having this queen in there may help to prevent them from going into a laying worker situation. And if she does lay some eggs, then this colony may recognize that she's an inferior or an old queen and they might make some super seizure cells. So this is just kind of a temporary measure to kind of keep this colony going until something better comes along. So I've put the queen out of my queen catcher into this little queen cage. So the bees in the colony won't be able to get to her and sting her if they don't immediately accept her. And right now she's kept in there with a cork, but I'm going to replace that cork with a marshmallow so the bees in the hive can release her slowly as they get accustomed to her scent. Marshmallow's in place, we're ready to put her in the hive. In the lay-ins hive, I can't just put that queen cage on top of the frames or in between because there's no gap between the frames. So instead I'm going to put her on the inside on the bottom of the frame. There's not much space on this frame. We'll find a space for her. And since I've already been in this hive, these bees may be a little defensive already. This is comb that I had cut out from that cutout from that apartment. And it pretty well fills the frames. And here's a piece that was a partial piece So that'll make a good candidate to uh, put that cage on the bottom of the frame. So there's the cage inside the hive, sitting on the bottom of that frame. Got a kind of caddy corner so that that sugar is accessible, not up against the comb or the wire. And we'll just kind of hope for the best in terms of their acceptance of her. Like I said, she's not going to be a salvation for this hive, but this is kind of a stopgap measure to get them any sort of queen right now until we can get them a better queen later. It's been about 10 days now since we went into this hive, which was the failing colony due to an older queen, and removed her in hopes that 
the bees would have enough brood left to be able to make themselves a new queen. So let's go in now and see how they're doing. From the top, it looks like they still have a decent population of bees to kind of keep things going. And that was part of my concern is that they may not have a big enough population to maintain the colony while they're making a new queen. They still have this end frame that uh, has a lot of honey and pollen on it. More honey on the back side. I think that's about the same as what we saw <clears throat> when we opened this before. Second frame doesn't have a whole lot in it. A little bit of honey and some pollen. Now we're getting into where the bees are. Should be where our brood was and hopefully they've done something with that brood. And they have. So on this side there's really nothing on the frame but on this side we have queen, a queen cell there and a queen cell there. And we'll see if there's any others. And it looks like that's it. There's some cap brood on this frame and a pretty good covering of bees. But the other side is pretty much empty. So that's good news. We'll move on and look on the other, at the other colony that we added the old queen to in hopes that they would make some brood in order to make themselves a new queen. This colony is the bees that I got from a cutout and they were queenless when I got them home. And so I gave them the old queen from that nuke box. Not that I expected that she would be a salvation for this hive, but she may give them enough brood that they can make a new queen for themselves. Getting that comb attached to the sides of the frames there. Got a lot of nectar in there. Uh, at least on that side we have nectar. On the other side there isn't much at all. Population so far is looking a little low. We'll see what happens when we get farther back here. Uh, a little better here. See some pollen in this side. And some nectar, nectar on this side. Got some pollen on that side. I do like they have that comb attached here. So uh, those rubber bands are becoming less necessary. Here is our queen cage. And they chewed out the marshmallow I put in there and released the queen. Hopefully she was accepted all right. They only have five frames and not a lot of bees. A little better population farther in here. And I'm seeing some very young larvae in here. So they got larvae, so the queen is kind of doing her job. They've got this comb. This is just some small pieces of comb. I just kind of rubber banded it in up next to the wire and they have attached it to the wire, so that's a good thing. And I'm seeing some eggs in there. So with those eggs, I might make the decision to just go ahead and pull that queen now. and see if they'll make a new one. And there's our queen. She is actually laying up larvae in here better than she was in that Langstroth box. She's got larvae on both sides of this frame, covering a pretty good area Nothing outstanding, but uh, it makes me tempted to let her <laughs> stay in here for a while. That, that may be a, a bad call. She uh, has done what I had hoped, and I hate to push it a little too far with her. So there, got the queen out of there. Now we'll let these bees raise themselves a new one. 
And they'll have some brood to kind of keep their numbers going a little bit in the meantime. This seems to be a couple gambles that so far are working out okay. I'll be honest, when I added that old queen to this cutout colony, it kind of felt like a crazy idea. But I'm real happy with the way that she has laid up brood in here. It worked out just like I had hoped. Now I've pulled her out of the colony and hopefully they will do their part to make a queen. As far as that other colony, I'm really glad that they were able to make a couple queen cells. And now we'll just hope that one of those queens emerges and gets mated successfully. So far, it looks like a couple success stories. I couldn't be happier. It's great when things work out the way you plan. If you enjoyed this video, I invite you to check out this video that YouTube thinks you'll like. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next time.